While Nick was growing up in uh, Yamhill, Oregon, uh, there was another person in Oregon, in Ashland, who was growing up. Her name was Anne. Now, Anne uh, was in her senior year at high school, and of course, everybody was applying to colleges, and this is the spring, and so what are you hearing? You know, where are you going? And so Anne was walking down the hallway, and she came from a uh, middle, uh, sort of a working class background. Her, neither of her parents went to college, and she was the oldest of five, so of course, they were not going to be able to afford college. So she didn't apply. Her English teacher, Hattie Converse, sees her in the hallway and says, Anne, where are you going to college? And Anne sort of shuffles her feet and says, oh, you know, I'm not going. It's too expensive. You know, I'm the oldest. You know, my, my parents, we can't afford it. And so Mrs. Converse takes Anne by the hand and says, Anne, you come here, brings her into the school office and says, you've missed most of the deadlines, but there are still some that you can apply to. Here are the forms you can apply to them, take them home and fill them out. She basically ordered Anne to fill out the forms. Anne goes home, she fills out only one because she doesn't want to have to pay more of the school fees. She fills out the form for the University of Oregon. She gets in and she gets a scholarship, partial scholarship. And she goes to University of Oregon, it changes her life. She, started, she starts studying journalism and she gets odd jobs to help pay for tuition. Uh, which you can afford back then she you know worked as a hotel maid she got odd jobs and so Anne, after graduation she gets a job at a local tv station years later Anne curry becomes the anchor of the today show so you know basically she got a nudge from her high school teacher Hattie Converse, from the working class. These are the types of nudges that we actually think uh, are needed now because you know there are so many talented people in the working class, diamonds in the rough, that we actually just never see. There's so many ands around there. Talent is universal, but opportunity is not. And that's what we have learned uh, in, you know, partly from a lot of the research. We have also learned that there are some incredible solutions. We're not going to solve everyone's problem. We're not going to solve all of the problems, but we can make a lot of progress. But we psych ourselves out in several ways, and I'm going to talk about that now. The first way we psych ourselves out is, uh, and it has to do with the personal responsibility that Nick mentioned, is that we say, oh, yeah, it's, it's their responsibility. Each person is responsible for themselves. You know, why should the government even help? And that is a very destructive, uh, you know, uh, pattern and attitude. Um, there's this idea that you can lift yourself up by the bootstraps. Well, have you, have, has any of you ever tried to do that? <laughs> you know, physically, you know, the laws of physics don't let you do that. And in fact, when the term first came about in the early 1800s, late 1700s, it meant to do the impossible because it was impossible. But somehow, in the 1970s, it became, oh, yeah, that's what you have to do. I mean, you dig yourself in a rut, you've got to lift yourself up. Well, that's certainly true that you bear responsibility for your own actions. Farland should have stayed in high school. Farland should not have done drugs. The problem is that, you know, we give people second chances in America all the time. If you file for bankruptcy, you get a second chance. If you file for bankruptcy again, you get a third chance. If you file for bankruptcy a third time, you get another chance. You can even run for president. You can even win the presidency. Why can't we give second chances and third chances to people who are you know, struggling in the working class, right? 